My main message to dairy farmers about extending the life or the longevity of their cows would be to um, improve the transition. The, uh, that transition phase is the period in which on most dairies, three-fourths of all disease events in the life of a cow occur. And probably in modern commercial dairy farms where rations are managed quite well, the key risk factors in our larger scale dairies have been uh, factors related to comfort and space, um, sufficient bunk space, um, minimizing social turmoil and things, and all of those factors affect, we think, feed intake and help reduce the likelihood of metabolic disease. Looking at ways to optimize the productivity of a cow through her lifetime, I mean, that's really what a lot of the work that I'm doing is focused on, is trying to figure out how to optimize lifetime productivity. And in, in my, from my perspective, that starts at the day of birth. Feeding a calf really well getting proper nutrients into them up to at least 42 and maybe 49 days provides them a greater opportunity for milk yield in the first and subsequent lactation um, um, and, and quite a bit of milk, you know, six, seven, eight hundred kilograms. The um, milk yield and the payback from improving transition can be phenomenal. Our research suggests that when we look at simple disease events, of clinical disease events, we underestimate the importance of transition, partly because there's clinical disease events, but there are subclinical components that are also as important and are more common than the clinical events. We would suggest that a good transition can easily uh, between the most successful farms and the least successful transition programs can easily approach $400 per cow per year. Calves that are born in the wintertime, uh, because of the environmental temperatures, have a higher maintenance requirement than a calf born when it's warmer outside. So what we've been able to observe is that if we're feeding the same amount of nutrients in, in January as we are in July, that the amount of nutrients above maintenance that a calf is receiving in January is gonna be much less compared to the warmer temperatures, therefore their growth potential is decreased, and that seems to then impact long-term productivity because we just didn't get enough lean tissue growth um, prior to weaning. We uh, developed the Transition Cow Index um, looking for a tool that we could use in the uh, commercial world um, without having consistent medical records. And the Transition Cow Index told us that the impact of disease events and poor transitions is much bigger than we anticipated. For example, we have viewed a stillbirth of a calf as very bad for the calf, but neutral to the cow. And transition cow index shows that the, a stillborn calf has as detrimental effect on the cow as a dystocia. And that either of them are, have a greater impact than a uncomplicated ketosis.